So real quick, we'll just kind of run through because we'll talk sports for just a little bit because I know there's a lot more things to you than obviously just sports. Obviously, if you follow Tony on Facebook, you know this very, very well. So first thing, real, how's the kind of the new offense taking shape? How are you looking, liking things under John Embry? Do you feel comfortable in, his, in the new plan that he's putting together? Uh, yeah, I definitely feel comfortable in the new plan. It's uh, it's an NFL prototype offense. It's all pro style. They ran at the Redskins and at the Vikings, and I think like 16 of the 32 teams in the NFL run it. Uh, I, I have dreamed to play on the next level, and I have the ability to play on the next level, so I feel comfortable in the offense, and uh, I'm glad I have a shot to pick it up and learn it from some of the best coaches in the business. So what what would you say kind of the uh, the main thing is difference between an offense that Embry runs and an offense that CU has been running over the past couple of years? It's a uh, it's high energy and it's um it's strictly detailed um, and it's a lot more physical. They like to run it at you a lot, and as a receiver, um, they ask a lot of you in the run game um, because in this system you're the key to making it go downfield. If you don't block and you don't play physical at the point of attack. The offense kind of flutters out, and uh, if the running back doesn't have a good day, good day can't run the ball. Right, the receivers don't get the rock because it's, it's a lot of play action mixed in there. So, well, I'm assuming for you being a you know big tall guy, that yeah. th that's going to work into your benefit there as oh, well. Yeah. Blocking is something that I take pride in myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have a defensive mind state. I played defense my whole life, so I like to go out there and and, and play a little physical. It gets boring on the perimeter when you're not really involved physically. So. Right. Uh, I embrace the role and I love it. Well, that's good. So big things that are happening there for you. Yes, um, sir. It gets uh, all started on September third. We report and uh, well, oh, actually, no, yeah. August third. Sorry, report. okay. September. I'm not sure. I think it's first week of September. We play. Ron, when are your sports information yeah, guy? When, uh, when you? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> first, first, first weekend in September. Yeah, first, first weekend in September, weekend. and in you Hawaii. will be at yeah, Hawaii. Yeah, so, have Hawaii. you ever been to Hawaii before? I've never been to Hawaii. It's okay. my first time. Um, I'm glad it's football related because hopefully, uh, God willing, in my future, athletically, I'll go again for the Pro Bowl one day. <laughs> there you go. That's By the way, if, if you've got a question that you'd like to uh, uh, ask Tony, you can always just, a uh, couple of ways you can get in touch with us. Tweet us at Radio 1190 or just simply send us a text, 720-295-1190. Once again, 720-295-1190. And I will try my best to get your question and ask it to Mr. Clemens there. Some of the things that are happening in, in the world of sports, uh, I want to kind of touch base with you about maybe just kind of college football in general. The Big Ten kind of floated out the idea mm -hmm. of possibly play, paying players. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that something that you would embrace? I mean, Tim Tebow was on The Daily Show the other day saying <laughs> that, you know, he, he thinks it's a good thing, you know, giving players an extra maybe, you know, $3,500 a season or something like that just for the incidental expenses it is uh i honestly do think it's a good thing um unfortunately i want to be able to no but for benefit, but, but for future <laughs> i mean well lovely, let me ask you let me ask you i mean how i mean is it is it a struggle going through the season not being able to maybe hold down a part-time job or something I mean, like that during the season it's not too bad because uh you don't really have to use too much money. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to. It's not the offices. You don't have time to really do stuff like you're that. You're in the film room all the time, yeah, right? You're, you're always. You're in season. You're in practice. You're doing film. You're, you're doing all of those things. So, it's the off season. It's the summers. The summers are real bad. Um, you know, like you you can't. You really you don't have money to like really buy groceries if you're. I'm an out of town kid, so I don't right. have to go home often because you can't really afford flights and you can't work because. You do have full loads of classes. I mean, you're a student first. So on top of what you do football-wise, you have a lot to do school-wise. So, um, Are you taking summer classes? I am taking summer classes. Okay. Uh, I'm in my, my second to last one. Nice. And then I'll be done. I can take one in the fall, and I'll be finished. Graduate. Did you, and uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but did you hear about James Harrison from the Pittsburgh Steelers? I, I actually haven't, but uh, one of my aunts on Facebook posted something about Since it. Since you're a, you know, you're a Pennsylvania <laughs> yeah, guy, yeah, exactly. I, I thought you would, you know, you might be all. So basically, to, he basically kind of ripped Ben Roethlisberger one. He was saying that, you know, about throwing picks Jeez. in the Super Bowl. <laughs> and then he ripped um, Roger Goodell. Saying you know he's James Harrison. For those of you who don't know, was fined over was fined a hundred thousand dollars last year for the hits, the collisions, and so one. We'll start off with question number one. I mean, how do you look at a guy like that? You know, ripping 
his own teammate, whether it's justified or not. I mean, did, I mean, what does that say to you, first of all? Um, I respect James Harrison, and I respect what he's done for the city of Pittsburgh, first and foremost. Um, you know, go Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> James Harrison, um, I mean, he, he's a grown man, and he has a right to do that. It's a business, and he's, and he's a champion, and he's a born winner and a proven winner. And for him to rip Ben, uh, sometimes you need tough love. I'm sure they have a relationship that goes deeper than this. So, you know, I'm not sure how Ben would respond to it, but being on a team, I know – if a guy ripped me for, uh, you know, making the mistakes, which they have, you know, it, it's not, it's not, you don't look at it in as a negative light. So it might cause Ben to step his game up, and it's a business. They're pros, so, right. you know, those guys, their jobs are on the line every day. So you have to understand that when you listen to what he says and take it all into context. Well, and, and to be fair, James Harrison said he was misquoted in, in the article. I I'm believe sure it's, he was. That happened to me a few times. So. <laughs> <laughs> never here, though, obviously. No, never here. Never no. here. That's why I keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the Roger Goodell thing. And, and, you know, is there – have they been sitting there – everybody's talking about concussions, and yeah. and that just seems to be at the forefront of, of – topic as far as sports and contact sports yeah. in general is there do they just grind it into your head i mean are there new rules now then in mean, football i mean do you guys feel like you play differently because yeah, you at the end of the day ahead. defensively i think you do play differently because you know you have that stigma on you getting fines um but concussions are always going to be part of the game of football in any contact sport it doesn't matter what rules you put on it or regulations that's not going to leave the game football is football and I really personally don't I'm an offensive guy but I feel that I don't like it for the defense you know they don't get to play the way they they want to they don't get to play full speed they play a lot hesitant a lot more hesitant and as an offensive guy it's like I mean how much more offense do you want the game to have you know it's like you don't have to worry about getting hit now um I, I really don't I don't approve of it. I know I'm all for safety and stuff like that, but it's a contact high contact sport and you take the risk by playing it every day and you you know what can come of it. Well social media is such a part of it seems like it seems to be so integrated into sports now. Do they give you classes on, on like as far as you know think before you hit send, you know, oh, yeah. as far as like Twitter and Facebook and everything yeah, like that? Yeah, you definitely have to. Um I'm actually real cautious conscious about that stuff. Uh, about what I post and stuff like that. And um, I like to speak my mind a lot, and I have a lot of personality. But I do that on Facebook because I know everybody personally on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I do not accept people I really do not know in real life and real speed. So that way I can say certain things because I don't have to worry about it floating and getting put out there in a, in a negative context. And everybody that reads my stuff, they know the type of personality and sense of humor I have. Okay, well, I hope I'm not violating some sort of like confidentiality or some sort <laughs> of uh, agreement that we have. But I, I am a fan of yours on Facebook <laughs> because you are very colorful on Facebook. Obviously, something some of the things that have kind of just happened in the news there. I'm just going to throw. I'm just going. We're just going to machine gun fire at you real Let's quick. Go. Go. Uh, Casey Anthony, you were very outspoken <laughs> about about what happened with her, uh, and and do you feel like the it's something the the media corrupted, or what is what is your whole take on on the my whole, whole case? take on the Casey? And it's it's interesting because I have people. I have a lot of friends out in situations where you know a lot of people are innocent. You know that get get high times or get sentenced to crimes that they haven't done. Right. And then there's a lot of people that don't get sentenced for them. And at the end, like, me throwing out about Casey Anthony is just like, at the end of the day, who really wins here? You know, the child mm -hmm. is gone. You know, it's a tragic situation. The child doesn't see justice. And uh, I wasn't there, so I can't say she did it or not. But um, if she didn't, I feel that somebody she knows did. You know? Right. And, uh, do you feel same, do you feel race played a factor in that? Do you think it, it might have been? I feel like a lot of different things played a factor, and I don't feel race was one of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like her background played a huge part in it. Her family's background. Her dad was a decorated officer, and there was no way that that being that caliber of police officer, they're going to allow that to tarnish his badge. You know, especially when it's his daughter. So. Um, and at the same time, I look at it from another side after mm -hmm. I calm down, and <laughs> the defense really didn't present a type of case that they right. should have. If they really wanted to, they thought they had an open and shut closed case and they, they didn't do a good job of presenting a case to a jury of her peers that would look at the case and be like, okay, uh, she's guilty. So um, there's a couple different things that play a factor in that. I don't think race is one of them. And uh, 
I still pray for the child though and the family of her lost ones because it really is a tragic situation. Well, well, the, the other I, it seems like one of, the, one of the other favorite TV shows of yours happens to be that you like to comment on is Hoarders as I well. I do like Hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually and you you made and honestly and I, I no bull or anything like that. You made me really think about it because you said the other day you said, "Is it a mental? Do they have a mental condition essentially that makes them?" Hoard and everything, yeah. and and what is is it any different from somebody who you know can't stop drinking or has a drinking right. problem or you know has an eating problem or anything like that? Is there just some something that switched? And maybe I don't know what do you, what is your your Doctor Tony's essentially? <laughs> well, what is your self analysis was, about that? I was watching Hoarders and it was just interesting to me because I that show puts a lot of documentaries on about mental states and there was a there was a, a lady on there that she was overweight and she wouldn't leave her bed she wouldn't leave her room she wouldn't leave food alone she didn't want help and she reminded me a lot of the same personality same traits that the hoarders on the show had about certain items so it just clicked on my, I just it dawned on me I like had an epiphany like would she be considered a hoarder right you know because she hoards calories she hoards food she doesn't want to give it up like she's not willing to let it go and uh, I was hoping I threw it out there hoping somebody could like you know it is and it seemed like yeah. like hundreds of people almost responded to you there as well <laughs> yeah, so I, you, I, you I really, touched the nerve let's put I, it that I, way I, 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 it wasn't like I wasn't trying to be disrespectful like I honestly no, really wanted to know you if, were being provocative if, yeah, and, and if, so uh, if extreme obesity was is considered a hoarding uh, state all right, well, moving on, since one of the things, we have uh, Hannah Warner coming up next uh, talking about uh, music news there. We'll get it. You're obviously one of your other passions besides yes. shoes yes. That, I've, that I've seen there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm an airhead. The, I'm the main, I, I want you to wear those Mango Nikes that you have one of these days. Oh, no problem. Those things, those look <laughs> pretty awesome. But music is something that is, is obviously one of your passions as well. Real quick, what are some of your musical influences? Who... Who have you seen this summer? What have you been doing as far as music-wise? Actually, uh, I haven't got to go to any shows. Okay. I wanted to go see uh, Big Sean and Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa's a hometown guy, so I wanted to go support him. Didn't get a chance to go do that. Um, was he playing Boulder or Denver or something was, like that? He uh, was in Broomfield, and he did, uh, I think he did a show in, in Denver somewhere, too, before that. Right. Uh, didn't get to see them, too, but I'm a fan of their music. I like Wale. He's from D.C. Mm -hmm. I like The Weeknd, and I know Boulder has an electronic music scene here the weekend is from canada he's an r&b singer and uh he does he has a lot of electronics and his music and he's very he's very talented brings me to my next point <laughs> so i mean you you mentioned electronic because i mean obviously look at i mean you know you wouldn't say oh he's into dance music or, or something like uh -huh. that but you you have a very kind of definite electronic music background. Would you w be interested in something like Global Dance Festival that's happening this weekend yeah, at Red I, Rocks? I, heard, I hear a lot about Global Jam. I actually, um, since I've been to Denver, I went down to a club in Denver. It's called Beta. Yes. I went down and seen Tommy Lee one night, and uh, it was it was interesting. It's a different scene. I don't like it all. Because some some stuff you have to be in a, under a different influence. Exactly. <laughs> I get, <laughs> and, okay. uh, I'm a, and I'm not. I'm a sober guy, so right. some stuff I didn't like. But I like the creativity of it, and I, I respect you know the music. Even if I don't like it, I respect the creativity of it because it is a hard thing to do. Is music something that you would like as a side? I mean, obviously, your first and foremost is is trying to do well this season. You know, do well for CU, and then maybe go on to the next level. Yes. But is music something that you could definitely see yourself doing, you know, as a side project or possibly full time in the future? I would love to like produce music on the side on the side level. I like to write music. I like to produce it. I have the talent to to do it myself, but I don't really see myself as being an artist. Well, you know, since you just mentioned that, I'm gonna I, I have to ask. Can, <laughs> can you can you bust out a few lyrics there for us or something like? Oh man. Um... I might have to let that wait. Okay. I'm, I'm a football player. I might have to let that wait. <laughs> All right. Uh, but when I come back on the show, I'll make sure I have something, uh, something for you, something right. nice for you. All right. Since we did talk a lot of pop culture, are you are you a Harry Potter guy as well? I am a Harry Potter guy. Uh, Do you have your I tickets yet? On them. I haven't. I'm gonna go see them out the class on Friday. <laughs> it, it's been sold out. I have a friend that works in the movie theater because I'm a movie goer. Okay. I'm a movie goer, and she uh, she gave me the inside scoop today that. Um, the midnight shows down there at Century are all sold out. All 16 theaters That's sold true. out at midnight. 3 a.m.s. They have a 3 a.m. show. They're all sold out. Yep. So I'm gonna try to go catch Harry in the uh, in the Deathly Hallows in the middle of the day and see how him and Snape and all this right. whole thing. Best movie you've seen so far this summer? 
Um, oh, that's rough. Let me think. X Men, Transformers, uh, Bridesmaids. Uh, I want to say, I'm going to say, uh, X Men was the first one. Okay. Transformers was uh, Transformers 3D was second. Okay. And uh, Horrible Bosses was third. Gotta go see Horrible Bosses. Audi, you're a resident movie person. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I do you, con what, do you was concur? It, good? it was it was a classic movie. It was really? better than Hangover Two. Is that about the guys that try to go kill their bosses? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the preview right. of that one. Right. Uh, got the dude from um, Jason uh, Jason Bateman in it. Yeah, Jason oh, okay. Bateman. And uh, all right. Well, we will. Uh, oh well. Of course, I can't. I can't let let you go without asking. Okay. I knew was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> what do you? Okay, the whole dreadlocks thing. Ah oh, man, the dreadlocks. The well, dread see, okay, here's here's <laughs> what. Let me let me kind of like set this up real quick for people at home. So there's a there's a game out on Electronic Arts puts it out on Xbox and PlayStation, basically across the board, and it's called NCAA 2012. It's a football college game. Tony's in the game, but they gave him dreadlocks this year, <laughs> and part of me thinks the, one of the reasons why they do this is because they EA was sued, and, so, and I think that's that's a fair thing. I think you know if you're going to use somebody's likeness in the game. They should at least be able to profit yeah, somehow. That's a good point. I haven't really, I didn't look at it that way. So that's why they kind of, they, I think they intentionally messed somebody up. But I think it was just kind of funny that they gave you drugs. So what did you think when you saw that? I didn't think it was me. Josh Hardigan just changed into 17 from 55 this spring, and he has long hair. So I thought. Now, what was, did you say to him when he changed to 17? We would be like, wait I a mean, minute. He wore, he wore 17 in high school. So, okay. I mean, and he plays defense, so I was kind of excited for it. We had this whole 17 club going on. <laughs> me and my boys that wear 17 all over the country on both levels. So, uh, I was happy to, happy to have him in the membership and to the 17 club. He's going to do great. As far as the dreads, um, it's a new look. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't get dreads though. I mean, it doesn't fit me right. My mom likes me clean cut, so I, I wouldn't do the dread things. But uh, you know, throw me a couple passes anyway, man. Have you looked at your attributes yet? Have, have I haven't it? looked at it. Okay. I heard I was finally the, one of the highest rated uh, receivers on the team for once. You know, and uh, I seen the gameplay you gave me, and I got a little bit of speed on me. I there didn't you like go. The fact that I dropped the deep ball, but, <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you can't be perfect all the time. All right, so check out uh, one way you can check out Tony is obviously in NCA 2012, but there's a couple other different ways that you can check him out online as well. Yes. Where can so, they Where can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can hit me on Facebook, Tony Dot V Clemens. I'll be on there. I'm not Twittering yet. Uh, <laughs> that new Google Plus. Social network. Is, wow, you're one of the few, you're yes. one of the few people on Google yes, Plus. Yes, I just nice. applied to it, and uh, you know when that opens up, I will be on Google Plus. Um, I Skype though. I like the Skype. Uh, if you have Skype, you can add me at Tony Kenobi. I'm down to do Skype, and uh, you know, talk to me. I talk back, as uh, you can see. All right, and don't forget that you know CU football is coming up very shortly, and you'll be able to check him out in the Pac-12. Sir. Something very, very big next season. We're going to take here a break here at Radio 1190. We'll be back in just a moment. Good to be back.